Well, we're back in Durango yet again. Yeah. Back to Colorado. <laughs> back to Colorado. <laughs> it just seems that's the, the nature of life anymore. But we were just kind of passing through and we have heard that they're rebuilding a K-28 in the shops at Durango. Cool. Let's rush over to the Durango Roundhouse and look in on the K-28 restoration. <laughs> the Durango Roundhouse is one of the premier steam locomotive uh, facilities in the United States. The whole thing burned down in the late 1980s and was rebuilt from the ground up. This is the only surviving wall of the original roundhouse. The rest of it was all built in 1989. The railroad's been in continuous use for over a hundred years, originally as the Denver and Rio Grande, but now as the Durango and Silverton. This is a narrow gauge Mikado style engine. The Rio Grande classified these with a K number, this being a K36. But the Durango Silverton is better known for a smaller version of this engine, the K28, which has an air pump mounted right on the front of the thing. It looks quite peculiar. But at this point in time, there are none of those in service. In the 1950s and 60s, there were three of them, and that's pretty much all you see in the old pictures. But one of them was heavily damaged in the roundhouse fire, and another one pulled out of service some 20 years ago for needed repairs, and the third one was just put here in the museum. This is number 42, uh, Rio Grande Southern number 42, and if you remember our show from a couple of weeks ago on the High Country Railroad, this was the first locomotive on that railroad when it was a three-foot gauge railroad. And now it's over here at Durango. Hasn't run uh, since it came over here. This model of 478 is a K28 locomotive and 478 is here in the museum. There's nothing really wrong with it. It's just that its uh, federal boiler inspections are up and it needs to be torn down and inspected and gone through before they can run it again. Knowing that that was going to happen, they started rebuilding K-28 number 476 a while back. And, well, that locomotive's not ready to go, and so right now they don't have a K-28. We love Durango. It's fun to go there. And they allow you back into the shops and, and yards and stuff, but you have to do that on a tour. That's cool, though. Some people say they don't let you back in there, but you simply have to sign up for it. It's a lot safer, too. Ooh, check out this K-37. No, wow. Uh, these things are around. This one's probably the roughest of all of them, but there is an operating one in Golden. Uh, but, oh my goodness, they have parts for everything here. This is certainly the best equipped narrow-gauge shop around. A little bit of everything. No kidding. This is the locomotive service track here. And what this guy's doing here is rounding up some wood pellets. No. <laughs> it, uh, when I saw wood pellets, it's like, do you guys run that? No, they, they run it on coal. Yes. Not wood pellets, right. coal. But they have a whole bin full of wood pellets here, and they just use these for starting right. the fire. And then once the fire's going, mm -hmm. they load it with coal. I'm glad they run them on coal. So do I. It's, it's memorable. It's The smell of burning coal, the coal smoke. It, it reminds you of your childhood it and does. stuff. This is cool. Locomotives also run on sand, of all things, but they need it for traction. This is the sand house, and they keep sand in here to keep it out of the weather, keep it warm and dry. And then it's blown up into this tank through that pipe. Uh, compressed air blows the sand up into that upper tank, and then from there, it just gravity feeds down into the front dome on top of the boiler. And here's where they get rid of cinders. They're pulled out here and dumped in a big pile and then dumped into a drop bottom gondola. This drop bottom gondola, notice, has been reconstructed uh, with steel sides instead of the original wood. I guess they just got tired of rebuilding it. That's probably it. But they dump the cinders on the track just to get rid of them. Mm, that's and good it, idea. it helps the track, actually. It does. 
And here's the most infamous and funnest piece of equipment in any roundhouse, the turntable. Yeah, it's kind of cool if you look. The turntables just run on rail. Yes, it's bent. In it's a just a big circle of rail on <laughs> ties, and the wheels of the turntable ride on That's that. That's amazing. Now, this incredibly cool locomotive here is a K36 Mikado. And right now, that's all they have running on the railroad are K36s. But personally, I think these are the most beautiful of the narrow gauge engines. They are. They're really beautiful, this beast. It sounds like it's alive. It sounds like it's breathing. But they're big and they're powerful as narrow gauge engines go. And right now, it's running that whole railroad, or K-36 locomotives. They've got four of these, but they really need more than four locomotives, because in the summer, they run four trains a day, and if one of them broke, they'd be crap out of luck. No kidding. Notice that the turntable here runs on a little small steam engine. All the ones we've seen to date are Armstrongs. You just grab a hold of them and give a mighty tug, and away they go. <laughs> and away they go. But a locomotive this big, I think you'd be pressing your luck trying to just wrestle that thing around with your bare hands. No kidding. But I have seen K-36s moved by hand. Wow, somebody's strong. No kidding. It takes so long to get one of these things heated up and ready for the day that... They park them all fueled and hot like this and leave them overnight and they're all set to go in the morning. But That's neat. They never put the fire out. No. I'm paying particular attention to all of this because this is our current project at Garage Mahal. We're going to be building the roundhouse and turntable and we have a K36. Oh boy. And we need to be able to turn that turn on the around. turntable so we'll have Two K-27s and one K-36. And one very large turntable. And one very large turntable. Okay, this is the machine shop. Mostly what they do in here is turn wheels. Because, boy, do they go through a lot of wheels on a railroad. They're so easily damaged, and they just have to be replaced all the time. But I think these guys have something like 60 passenger cars that they need to keep oh, running. At least. Uh, times eight wheels, oh. you know, eight axles per car. Uh, so all of these things are, well, not all, but generally speaking, these are wheel lathes for turning and shaping the wheels and getting them ready to go out on the track. Oh look, heavy duty Brillo pads. It does look exactly like a scouring pad of some kind. This is a, a larger wheel lathe and they're turning tires for a steam locomotive. So those need to be shaped as well, but they're just a little bit bigger than the wheels that run on the cars. This is a wheel lathe for turning the whole axle that goes up underneath the passenger car. These things have to be turned to a very specific diameter and profile or they're just not gonna work right. So it's actually a delicate bit of machining to turn out something that actually weighs close to half a ton. Oh my. They also have the equipment that you would need to set the wheels on to the axles and other pieces of equipment as well. This is a garden variety milling machine and that sort of thing comes up from time to time. And here are the wheels and axles that will be going on the new K28. Nice. These have actually already been fit with tires. The outer part of that wheel is detachable and was mounted in Pennsylvania. Of all places. But these are some impressive lathes and mills. Now this building on the right is the car shop. This too is a recreation. Here again, the original building burned down. Oh my. And they built a new one. This is a really well-equipped car shop. In fact, about half of the cars on the line were built in here. I like their wood shop. 
The original passenger cars were entirely wood, except of course for the wheels and trucks and that sort of thing. So this requires some pretty good Finnish carpenters. They're from Finland? Um, well maybe. They could be. <laughs> Finnish, <laughs> fin, Finnish carpenters. Rebuilding an antique passenger car is a bit like a puzzle. <laughs> and the cars are painted with automotive paint, so you need to have a paint booth. And there are the facilities. They actually salvaged these off of one of the space shuttles. So they took the seat belts off. Though. I sure hope they cleared the paperwork. Well, since it's rocket science, I'm sure they did. <laughs> okay, on a more serious note, they're assembling one of the wheel trucks here. After the wheels are turned in the machine shop, they have to be mounted into the wheel trucks to be put underneath the passenger car. Once the wheel set is in place, you have to mount the bearings to the end of the axle. This is the journal box, and these are the bearings that go inside the journal box. So the entire journal is assembled right on the end of the axle, and then the wheel truck is lowered down on top of the journals. If it weren't for the fact that they're dealing with pieces of equipment that weigh thousands of pounds, this would actually be quite simple. The actual construction of the whole thing is pretty basic. Here again we were paying very close attention to what they're doing because we want to build new wheel trucks for all of our passenger cars on the 20th scale railroad. And I've been working with Dave over at Ozark Miniatures to get his Hartford wheel trucks back on the market. And at that point, I'm going to put those wheel trucks under all of our cars. Once the journal box is on the end of the axle, uh, one simply slips the bearing inside the journal box. Gee, that was complicated. So over at the Roundhouse, this is where they're rebuilding the K-28, number 476. This is number 480, one of the K-36s, and it's just over here for a bit of servicing. This is K-28, number 472. This is the one that was badly damaged in the fire, and they're working on that one as well. But this is number 476 the locomotive that they're going to try to have running for February. Mm. This is the old tube sheet. Looks good to me, but they replaced it. And here's the generator and injectors and some of that sort of thing. Notice that you can see the tube sheet inside the boiler here through the firebox store. And here's the connecting rods that will be mounted to the wheel set from the machine shop when everything's ready. They plan to be running here soon, and I think we should come ride it. Absolutely. Now, everywhere you look, there is an antique truck or tractor or something. The new owner of the railroad is really into antique cars and trucks and farm equipment, and so they're rebuilding this kind of thing around here as well. Growing up, these things were all over the place where I'm from. And Ford tractors, they could be the cause of a large traffic jam along the highway. Really, what a pain in the, oh, this thing has wheelie bars. And they will wheelie right over backwards without those. Ouch. Well, this was the summer of Colorado, for sure. Oh, no kidding. It seemed like every 10 minutes we were heading off to Colorado That's for some for reason sure. <laughs> or another. Which is just fine, because we love Colorado. And we will be getting back. Oh, of course. But uh, winter has closed in, and we're saying goodbye to Colorado. And we're going to work on our own miniature Colorado over at Garage Mahal. Well, I love this roundhouse. It's neat. And we've been seeing a lot of roundhouses lately, but this one sort of takes the cake. I, I think in part because they use it so much. So I suppose it's only fitting that such a beautiful railroad would have such an incredible roundhouse. Not to mention the museum. Well, that's pretty neat. If that's amazing. Uh, the K-28, you know, it's... Uh, 
The first time I saw a K28, I just thought, I wonder what went wrong there. Some locomotive designer just must have had a nightmare and then jotted that down when they woke up. Kind of like, I was going to say the Edsel, but not quite that bad. But it's it's one of those things that's so damn ugly, you just have to love it. Yeah. And uh, I, I, now it's probably my favorite Mikado. Yeah. And it's just, it's just Macaws amazing. Mikados are different anyway. They're just cool. They're just neat. This great big, huge narrow gauge engine. It's mm -hmm. this dichotomy right off the bat that it's big, it's big. and it's little. And uh, the K28 is really ugly and it's really beautiful. Yeah. Well, they age, they, with age, they get better looking because they're so cool. They're just so cool. And, and it just speaks volumes of Durango Silverton because for the longest, longest time, that's all they ran on the Durango Silverton was K28s. Mm -hmm. They had three of them and now they'll have three again. Mm -hmm. And uh, all those old pictures from the 50s and 60s of all those old famous photographers mm -hmm. that went to Colorado and it's always the K28. And I, I guess that's the thing that I like the most about the K28 is it just says Durango Silverton. Absolutely. Well, anyway, the, they'll get that thing running here and then we'll go ride behind it because that will be cool. Oh boy. Anyway, if you haven't been over to the channel, over there we've got other locomotive restorations, including the T12 10-wheeler that they're doing at Antonito, uh, another narrow gauge engine, and that's really cool. And uh, uh, Dan Markoff's passenger car, oh, which boy. we're going to be revisiting here in I just a couple of weeks, wait. because Tuesday is just around the corner. He's always said it would be finished we'll be on, on a Tuesday, Tuesday. just we're hasn't ever said back. which Tuesday. Well, the actual Tuesday, I think, is about next Tuesday. Nice. And so we're rushing over there to, to see that make its inaugural runs. Never on a Monday. Never on a Monday. <laughs> and he's firing up his steam locomotive for just that occasion. And they're hauling the whole thing out to Henderson to run it on the narrow gauge tracks there. Nice. So we're going to go do that. We have a whole bunch of fun things coming up around Christmas. Mm -hmm. So that's just going to be a ball. Yeah. And we'll go back and see the K-28 when we get nice. it done. All good stuff. Well, if you haven't been over the channel then to look at all that nonsense that's over there, because boy, is there some, then hop on over to the channel. And if you're not a subscriber, do subscribe to the channel. And you can subscribe by clicking on the blue button. Zoink. You see the, the blue button? The blue button. That popped in right there. If not, your iPhone's turned or your device doesn't support it or something. Anyway, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here again probably in a week or a few days, mm -hmm. something like that, yes. with some more screwing around. See you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>